Greetings, me medical wildcats. Today's presentation is on maternity care at Northwestern. Next, please. This is going to be a two-part series. This month, I will be talking about the Chicago Maternity Center. And then next month, I'll be talking about the Prentice Hospitals. Next, please. The Chicago Maternity Center was established by Dr. Joseph DeLee. His parents were Polish immigrants who settled in Cold Springs, New York. His father wanted him to become a rabbi and was disappointed that he became a physician instead. But when he heard he was a professor, uh, he was satisfied. Dr. DeLee entered Northwestern uh, Medical School, at that time Chicago Medical uh, College, in, 19, in 1888. Uh, he took the, the exam, the competitive exam, to be an intern at Cook County and placed second and uh, did his internship there. He thought he was better prepared than most of his classmates uh, to go into OB because he had seen two deliveries uh, from the upper balcony in the, in the amphitheater uh, through opera glasses during his medical school career. Next. He was influenced by Professor Jaggard, who was one of the few scientific obstetricians uh, at the time in the United States. Uh, when Dr. Jagger died, Dr. DeLee became chief of OB at Northwestern at the young age of 27 and then later became chairman of OB gynecology at the University of Chicago. He wanted to elevate the specialty of obstetrics. He advocated home delivery with physician intervention. Next. In 1895, Dr. DeLee opened the Chicago Lying In Dispensary uh, to take care of uh, women on, in the uh, indigent uh, population of Chicago. In 1899, he opened the Chicago Lying In Hospital for those who could not be cared for as an outpatient. In 1903, he opened the Maxwell Street Dispensary, which later became the Chicago Maternity Center in 1932. He opened two inpatient hospitals in 1913, the Chicago Lying In Hospital on 51st Street near the Chicago University of Chicago campus, and in 1931, a new Lying In Hospital at 58th and Maryland uh, near the U of C campus. Next. Dr. DeLee advocated specialized maternity hospitals because he knew about the uh, terrible infection rate at general hospitals. He was opposed to midwifery, but he believed in increased physician intervention uh, during the deliveries. He thought home deliveries were probably the best alternative in these neighborhoods. It was an invaluable educational resource for physicians and nurses. Next. His obituary described him as a humanitarian a perfectionist, a true scientist, a skillful technician, an outstanding writer, an idealist, and humble. However, uh, he was also uh, said to have a limited sense of humor, an inability to compromise. He was a misogynist and had few friends. Uh, it was uh, very few people knew that he was uh, quite generous. He, he gave generously to Northwestern. He was known to leave money in uh, the homes after a home delivery so the families could buy food and he paid the way for some medical students uh, who could not afford the, their tuition. He never smoked, drank, or married. Next. He established the Chicago Lying In Dispensary for the outpatient uh, care of women and the home delivery service on Valentine's Day in 1895. In the first year, 204 women uh, were confined 52 students and 12 physicians were trained. He attempted to, unsuccessfully to have Northwestern take over the dispensary uh, and also University of Chicago, but uh, uh, this was unsuccessful. So it was reorganized in, uh, as the Chicago Maternity Center in 1932. Next. Dr. Beatrice Tucker became the medical director of the Maternity Center in 1931, where she served for 42 years. It is estimated she oversaw the delivery of at least 100,000 babies. Under her direction, the, medical, the maternity center became one of the finest OB facilities in the United States. She had low mortality and very low sepsis. Dr. Harry Benaron uh, was her partner at the maternity center. Next. Dr. Tucker uh, knew uh, from age six, she wanted to become a physician. Her father practiced medicine without a license, and somehow through his career, he stayed ahead of the, the medical boards. 
Dr. Tucker obtained her a BA from University of Chicago and her MD from Rush, paying her own tuition. At age 35, she entered Dr. DeLee's residency. She started this when he was out of town and when he came back, he was uh, quite upset that uh, a woman uh, was in his residency program. She was six feet tall and uh, was not intimidated by Dr. DeLee. Uh, despite his insults, uh, uh, he recognized her talents and uh, uh, she continued to work and became director, although he continued to insult her. Next. And this is Dr. Tucker on the left. She lived in the basement of the maternity center during the depression and said this was her penance for uh, the way her father was practicing without a license. She moved to the third floor of the maternity center by 1971 and said she was always on duty. She believed that every baby was worthy of the quality of medical care that wealthy patients received in the medical center. She also raised money to help support the maternity center. Next. Dr. DeLee and Dr. Tucker had uh, differing ideas of the way the maternity center should operate. Dr. DeLee wanted the maternity center to be a place where doctors could learn OB under adverse conditions and learn how to treat complicated cases. Dr. Tucker wanted to let nature do the job uh, during the delivery and teach doctors and nurses the physiology of childbirth. Next. The maternity center was located on Chicago's west side at 1336 South Newberry. The goal was to train doctors in the latest methods of self-delivery and they specialized in home births. During the peak years from 1929 to 1941, they averaged 360 deliveries a month with the peak year of 1949 delivering four, over 4,000 babies. Prenatal care was diligent. If a family failed to show up, somebody went out to the house to see what was going on. Next. The Chicago West Side where the maternity center was located was a desperately poor immigrant working class neighborhood. The demographics were that about 40% of the patients were Hispanic, 45% Black, 5% White Appalachian, and 5% White middle class. The patients often lived in the apartments with no heating or air conditioning. And the area was rife with unemployment, domestic abuse, malnutrition, street violence, and labor exploitation. 30% of the patients received no prenatal care, and often the first indication that a, a, an expectant mother was coming in was a call from the police or from a, a relative. Racist uh, critics questioned why money and resources should be directed to this subhuman population, as they called it, who lived in the urban slums. But Dr. Tucker and Dr. Benaron believed that all life was sacred. Next. The Maternity Center trained students at Northwestern, University of Wisconsin, and Chicago Medical School. The Maternity uh, Center crew, uh, consisting of a, uh, a doctor or a, a, a medical student and a nurse, stayed at the home through labor until two hours after the delivery. They peaked at 4,000 births in 1949. Their record for uh, mortality was uh, uh, outstanding. In the early 1930s, nationwide mortality for infants was 6.8%. It was about one fourth of that at the maternity center. The maternal mortality was 0.59% and the maternity center mortality was approximately one fourth of that. By the late, late 1940s, one out of every 20 births in Chicago was uh, performed at the uh, maternity center. Next. Dr. Tucker told the families to have a stack of newspapers a foot high and plenty of hot water uh, when they were ex expecting a delivery. Uh, she said that uh, newspapers uh, inhibited the growth and multiplication of bacteria. Newspapers were spread across the kitchen tables, an island of safety. Families were encouraged to stay with the mother. There was always backup available if the fetal heart rate dropped or if there was maternal bleeding. Next. Doctors Tucker and Benaron were examples of calm, compassionate care. Students would view the laboring mother as a human being suffering from pain and poverty, not as just a case. And uh, they did this by staying with the mother from the time uh, they were called uh, for labor until two hours afterwards. 
which meant they were uh, usually at the home for many hours. Families were, uh, could be present and were encouraged to support the mother. Dr. Tucker believed OB was a happy specialty. She said that in internal medicine, you may have a sick patient for 50 years, but OB was a happy specialty. This is a picture of her on the right, and she was known for saying, caring for poor women in their homes has outstanding social value. It kept families together and improved birth outcomes. And she had the statistics to prove this. Next. One of the students from uh, Chicago Medical School uh, who rotated through the maternity center in the 1950s said that the Chicago Maternity Center was a decrepit building on Maxwell Street on the near Southwest side. The area's main chief, complaint, chief uh, claim to fame was an open air market where anything from live chickens to cut rate brassiers could be negotiated on Sunday mornings. The first week we played nurse. The second week we played doctor. Sleeping arrangements resembled a long row of beds, like something out of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The, the team that was on call slept closest to the phone. Meals were not provided. The only sure source of food was a 24 hour poly sausage stand across the street. A good reason for stocking up on poly sausage before leaving was we never knew where we would get our next meal. We boiled gloves and laid them on newspaper to dry because there, was no, there were no disposable gloves at the time. Next. Booth House was where the uh, house staff and uh, students uh, slept uh, between the deliveries. Uh, this is uh, where they stayed for their two weeks uh, during their rotation. It was said that the neighborhood doctors were very protective, neighborhood residents were very protective of their doctors, sometimes. Uh, one of the former students uh, that I talked to said, people let those young doctors to be in white pants and white shirts with their sleeve rolled up alone. But another uh, student who rotated through the uh, center said that, I had my car parked in front of the center each night. One night the fog lights were stolen off my car. That day I was having lunch at the Jewish Deli on Halstead Street and I mentioned to a local sitting next to me about the theft. He said, you mean to tell me that someone stole something from a doctor's car at the center? I confirmed it. The next day, a package containing my fog lights arrived at the center. Next. Uh, another student said, we hung our stethoscopes out of our back pockets and everyone in the community knew who we were. Another student's experience was, we had finished up a delivery and we were on our way to another expectant mother in a nearby building. However, the new grandmother would not let us leave until she fried up steak, eggs, and potatoes for us. Next. Another student said, Loyal Davis, uh, the much feared chief of surgery at Northwestern, uh, made a great uh, but not always favorable impression on students and residents. Well before our class ever went to the center, trainees performing home deliveries had been known <laughs> to volunteer the name of Loyal Davis to mothers lacking names for their new babies. After a while, there were a lot of children named Loyal Davis running around the city's impoverished neighborhoods. And pretty soon, some of them were getting into trouble and committing crimes. <laughs> Dr. Davis figured out that someone or some persons must have been doing this to get even with him. Afterward, in our class at least, all birth certificates with names had to go through Dr. Davis's office so that he could check and see if any Northwestern students had been on cases at which the newborns were named after him. Next. Dr. David Kearns, a 1968 alum of the medical school, uh, later wrote a novel based on his experiences at the maternity center. And this is a picture of him with two of his classmates. I recently read the book and uh, it is a very good book, uh, whether or not you rotate it through the maternity center and I highly recommend it. Next. The maternity center started uh, uh, declining and, and uh, 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 closing down in the mid 60s. By 19, in the 60s, home births were declining. The neighborhood was becoming dangerous. The Dan Ryan Expressway had split the neighborhood in 1957 and home births were not profitable because it meant empty hospital beds. S statistics show that in 1936, 37% of the births were in hospitals, but by 1960, 97% of the births were in hospitals. This was due to 
uh, both maternal preference and the fact that uh, government programs were uh, paying private hospitals. Medical schools uh, were sending their students elsewhere for the OB. Next. In 1965, uh, Maternity Center President Daggett Harvey disclosed that the center would be forced to leave the current facility. He expressed interest in bringing the maternity center to the uh, Northwestern Medical School campus. The Northwestern president at the time was uh, J. Roscoe Miller and uh, President Miller offered ground on which to build the new facility uh, on the Northwestern campus, just west of Wesley Hospital. So this would be where Lurie Children's is now. Uh, this uh, site was not taken uh, by the new facility. Uh, then it was decided to place it on the southwest corner of Fairbanks Court and Superior. Uh, 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 but then this was a, a change to a site just east of Passivant where the new hospital was built. In 1969, the plans were for home deliveries to continue at approximately 1,000 per year. Uh, these home deliveries never did materialize after the closing of the maternity center. Next. The maternity center uh, trained 13,000 physicians in its time, 14,000 medical students, and delivered an estimated 145,000 babies. An agreement was consummated in 1968 for the new women's hospital. It assumed the maternity, care, maternity center's OB care. Free OB care would be offered at Wesley Hospital until the new hospital was built. Dr. Tucker uh, 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 retired uh, and went into private practice until 1975 when Dr. Benaron died. She delivered her adopted uh, son and also her grandson herself. And then she uh, passed away in 1984. Next. In 1972, construction began on a new women's hospital east of Passivant. And here you can see the quadrifoil uh, cross section of the new hospital going up. The Prentice name was added uh, following a generous donation from Ms. Prentice uh, in 1973. And in that year, home deliveries were phased out completely. The Chicago Maternity Center changed its status from a healthcare provider to a fundraising agency supporting obstetrical care and women's health initiatives. In 1975, the new Prentice Women's Hospital opened. Next. The site of the maternity center was demolished in 1973 to make room for the construction of the University of Illinois campus. Despite protests, uh, Mayor Richard J. Daley defended the demolition of the neighborhood. When uh, citizens complained about it, he said, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for your children and your grandchildren. He visualized an institution for education and economic growth. Although some people think he did this to the neighborhood for political reasons. Next. Next. I'd like to thank the following three ladies for furnishing a lot of the material for this presentation, uh, which would have been very difficult to do without them. Next month's presentation is on the Prentice Hospitals, the original Prentice and the newer Prentice. And uh, uh, I look forward to getting together virtually with everyone next month. So in the meantime, stay safe and healthy, stay connected, and I look forward to seeing you next month virtually.